On today's lesson, I'm gonna show you guys three easy strategies you can start implementing into your own play to break the speed limit and start playing super shredder licks like this one. kids and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Who's your best buddy? Uncle Ben. On today's lesson I'm going to be showing you guys a lick that I created to exploit three of the key principles in creating easy to play super fast alternate picked lines. And the sooner that you learn what those things are and learn how to start exploiting them, the sooner you can become super shred. It's in the key of A minor but I really encourage you guys to take the concepts that we're talking about and apply them to your own licks using different scales and different keys and stuff like that. But before we get started with the lesson, let's hear that lick again at stepdad speed. And as always, you guys can find full tabs for this lesson over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitar. Search for hashtag Weekend Wank Shop 222. Find the tab, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. And of course, all the backing tracks that I create here for my channel are available for my patrons to practice along to over on my Patreon page. So be sure to check out patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars and drop me some support if you like what you see here on the channel. Thanks a bunch. Okay, so the first shred strategy we're going to be talking about today is the use of downwards pick slanting, which is a picking style used by guys like Eric Johnson and Ingve Malmsteen to play licks that are faster than a cheetah on a speedboat. Okay, imagine my hand fingers here are your strings, E, A, D, G, right? Now, if you're doing the kind of standard down and up picking style, that's fine as long as you're on one string, but you'll notice as soon as I try to change strings, I have to make these tiny hops to get from string to string, right? That's because the tip of the pick is always, you know, kind of caught in between the strings. So I have to hop over this next one here in order to get to it. This is where downward pick slanting solves some of these problems. Now here's the idea. So regular picking, down and up, I'm always caught in between the strings, right? Now look at this. If you take your regular picking motion and you just turn it on its axis a little bit like this, you'll notice what happens here is that my downstrokes go into the string, so they're still kind of stuck. But my upstrokes pop out, right? So here's my downstroke, here's my upstroke, whereas before, this is my down, this is my up, it's stuck either way. When you do downwards pick slanting, you're only stuck half of the time, okay? Again, you can see it doesn't matter if I'm going to a higher string or a lower string, because my upstroke is free and clear, it's really easy to change strings after upstrokes. So with that strategy in mind, I designed this look so that all the string changes in this happen after upstrokes. And there's a really easy way to ensure that that always happens, which is secret number two. Okay, so alternate picking while doing downwards pick slanting favors changing strings after upstrokes. Keep that in mind. But that is kind of at odds with the typical, you know, shredder's favorite scale pattern, which is three notes per string, right? You can just kind of, you know, do that on your hands here and figure out really quick if I go down, up, down, that's three notes. And then I have to go ugh, up, down, up. Well, there's an easy change. Down, up, down, I'm stuck up, down, up, you know? And again, yeah, you could economy pick through that, but that's not what this lesson is about, so don't worry about that. Downwards pick slanting favors even numbers because even numbers will always change strings after an upstroke. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, one, two. Even numbers and downwards pick slanting always get along really well. And there's a simple trick that you can use in order to exploit this. Take any odd numbered grouping, like three, right? multiply it times two, suddenly you get an even number. So what was a difficult one, two, three, one, two, three thing, suddenly becomes a lot easier and even more musically interesting if instead of just playing the notes once, if you play them twice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I've created an even number and it's gonna be easier to change strings. This also ensures that the picking on every string is uniform. Because if you're just playing straight through a three note per string scale, 
for one, it's the most boring thing you can do musically, is just to play straight through a scale, you know? But the problem is, is the picking flips every time. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Which at high speeds becomes really tricky. But again, if you just multiply any odd number times two, or learn some other ways to work three note groupings that I'll tell you in a second, it becomes a lot easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. It's the same on every single string now. I guarantee you, you'll be able to play through sixes across each string way faster than you'll be able to play threes. Give it a try. So with those two things in mind, downward pick slanting and favoring even numbers, let's start breaking down this lick so I can show you guys how I put it together. Now the first thing you're going to play here is on your E string. You're going to play 5, 7, and 8. That's A, B, and C. And then play those three notes again. So again, we took an odd number and turned it into an even number by playing it twice. Next, play the same thing on the A string, 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8. Okay? Now, the next thing that we're going to do right here is instead of just continuing on through the, the normal kind of scale pattern, I'm going to have a little position shift here on the A string. And here I'm going to go to a new group of three notes. And again, three notes, that's kind of our enemy if we're using downward pick slanting, because that would be down, up, down. We need an even number. Now, I showed you a second ago how you can turn a three note grouping into a six. But there's also a way that you can turn a three note grouping into a four, like that right there. Now here's the deal, our next group of notes here is seven, eight, and 10, E, F, and G, right? And again, if I just play straight through those, down, up, down, I'm stuck in the strings. It doesn't feel uniform anymore. It also means the next string is gonna start on upstroke. Very bad. Check this out though. If you play the highest note, so the 10, the lowest note, the seven, and then just walk up the eight, the 10, okay? You've taken three notes and turned them into four, which means down, up, down, up. Easy on the picking hand, okay? So we had a group of six, a group of six, and a group of four. Okay? This is nice too, because typically whenever you play sixes, people just want those to be like triplets. Triplet, triplet, like that, you know? And uh, they do work very well for that, but the cool thing is because we're doing 6 plus 6 plus 4, that ends up being 16 notes, which is a perfect measure of 16th notes. So you can play this as 4s across a beat. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. That's our first fragment of this lick right here. I recommend just kind of practicing that little section right there really hardcore before you move on. Now that leads us to the next section of the lick which is going to tell you guys my other third shred strategy that works out really well which is working out ideas on pairs of strings in octaves. See here's the really cool thing. Any typical major or minor scale has seven notes in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, like that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven notes, right? Now the cool thing is, is if you have your typical three notes, three notes thing, and then you just add one more to it, like what I did when I did that position shift, that's seven notes of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the cool thing is, is because of the layout of the tuning of the guitar here, that puts you directly in position just to play the same thing on the next set of strings an octave above where you began. So in other words, rather than trying to keep up with constantly you know, shifting scale patterns and shapes and stuff like that, where it looks like this on these strings, but this on these strings and stuff like that, if you work out licks to where they resolve in octaves, it becomes really easy because you just kind of like repeat the same program for both hands on a different set of strings, you know? So you check this out. So after you played what you just did, Your first finger here will be above the 7th fret on the D string. That's an A note, the octave of where you began. Now because we're on this pair of strings, we can play the exact same shapes and everything like that. Of course it's going to be different fret numbers, you know, it's not 5, 7, 8 anymore. But think about the, the kind of formation of your fingers, how you used 1, 3, 4, and then like 1, 2, 4. You can do the same stuff, only starting here from the 7th fret on the D string. Check this out. It's exactly what I just played. It's the exact same fingerings and everything like that, just on a different set of strings. 
it makes things really easy to do because you're just freeing up hard drive space. You know what I mean? So that way you're not having to think about all these different shapes and patterns and stuff like that if you just repeat concepts in octaves. So basically the second section of the lick here is gonna be seven, nine, and 10 on the D twice. Same thing on the G. Then we're gonna do our position shift up here and go 12, nine, 10, 12. Again, our four note sequence. This puts you ready to restart the sequence here off of this A. Now this is gonna be the 10th fret here on the B string. And again, it's gonna lead you to the exact same stuff. Play 10, 12, 13 twice. Same thing on the E. And then you're gonna shift up here. And we're gonna play 15, 12, 13, 15, okay? And that's the entire ascending portion of the leg. And again, because I'm a downward pick slanting kind of guy, I deliberately arranged everything to work in even numbers, which means every string starts on a down, every string ends on an up. The string changes are easy, the picking feels uniform on every string. And uh, the, the kind of octave thing like that just makes it really easy to see and locate where to start and end all of these licks. Now this leads us to the descending portion here, which is the same idea, just kind of backwards in S. It sounds like this. Okay, so again, you can see right off the bat right there, this is also starting with a three note sequence here. The uh, 17, 15, and 13 on the high E. And again, down, up, down, well that sucks. My pick is under the E string right now. I'd have to jump to get to the B, which is hard to do if you're alternate picking. But if you turn it into six, easy peasy. My uh, pick is now right above the B string, ready to attack it and play the exact same pattern. So I gotta play uh, 17, 15, 13, two times. Six. Six. Then you gotta have your position shift here. Go down to the 12 on the B. 15, 13, 12. Again, a three note sequence turned into fours to make it easier to pick. This puts you ready to play the next octave of the figure, which is gonna start right here on the A note on the 14th fret G. So again, think about those same, you know, one, two, four kind of whole step patterns here that you played when you began the lick. And just play 14, 12, 10 twice. Same thing on the D. Then what you gotta do is your position shift down a half step here and play nine, 12, 10, nine. Now you're ready to play the same stuff in the low octave here, starting from the 12th A. 12, 10, and eight. Same thing on the E. And then the last part here is gonna go seven, 10, eight, seven. So the entire descending portion is again, just one lick moving in octaves, sixes and fours. And then I resolved on A, which is where we started right there, which works if you're you know, playing over an A minor or something like that. So the entire thing, ascending to descending, should sound something like this. Next. Next. Descending. Now, like I said, this isn't really about practice this lick and you'll become a shredder. It's about take the ideas that I've been talking with you guys about today and see what you can do with them. Get your downward pick signing thing going on. Start trying to come up with sequences of even numbers. Again, twos, fours, sixes, eights. The sky's the limit. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for new content coming at you every single week. Ring the bell for notifications. And you guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you like what you see here on my channel and want to say thanks, please do consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Thanks again for watching. Now get away from your computer and go play some dang guitar. Less clicking. More picking.